Okay, well, I got another email from another one of the listeners, Roger. He gives no last name. Possibly he's intimidated. But uh, Roger wrote, and it's a, a longer email. I won't read the whole thing, but the summation of it is that, uh, you know, I tweeted out a house show card, I think, from the Carolinas recently, and he said, I posted a house show card, and uh, he reminded him when house shows were so great and it got him thinking about his first one, which was August 17th, 1986 in Huntington, West Virginia. And it originally had the rock and roll against, uh, he says, I think Tully and Arn for the number one contender spot for the tag team title. But when the rock and roll's music hit, Ricky came to the ring with the belt. And we were told in the arena that the rock and roll had won them from the Midnight Express in Philly the night before. And Robert had a back injury, both things of which were true. So. At that point, uh, then, you know, he goes on to, there were some substitutions, but it was a great match. And then he had researched on YouTube some of the other shows that happened that weekend, because we've talked about the schedule we had for Crockett was ridiculous. And he talked about how, holy shit, you guys were in Philly the night before and here in Huntington the afternoon and in Charlotte that night. And I just, I looked up that weekend and... I thought I'd see, you know, what we did that he remarked was was so hectic. And yeah, it kind of was, but it was a regular weekend back in those days. But I will, I thought I'd just run through it real quick. And we would, uh, we would see wh when all the guys these days complain about, oh, we're on the road so much. Or, oh, we have to roll the schedule. Fuck. Bear in mind, we had wrestled every day leading up to this one weekend, a Saturday and Sunday. And then we were back working the following Monday. I think we actually had Tuesday that week off, which was unusual, but then we worked every day after that. But on Saturday, August 16th, in uh, 1986, we were living in Charlotte, and that's when Crockett had gotten his first private plane, the, the G1, the Gulfstream, or the Jabroni Jet, as we called it. And so at least we got, you know, to be able to tighten up these trips a little bit instead of having to fly commercial. So on that Saturday, we got to the Butler Aviation over at Charlotte Airport at probably about 8 o'clock. I think that's what it usually was. <clears throat> and we hopped on Crockett's plane, and we go to Atlanta. And we land, uh, I think in those days, that was early in the plane era, we may have still been going to Hartsfield, but usually... Later on, they figured that they could go to a private airport uh, in northeast Atlanta, and it was a little closer and a little easier. But let's say we got to the Atlanta airport. We got a cab. I have the uh, information in my book that we spent $26 on a taxi. And we go to the TBS studios where we do the two-hour Saturday night show and the one-hour Sunday night show there at Techwood Drive. So that's – we get there at – 10, 10, 15-ish, we tape from 11 until 2 o'clock or so, and then we hop in a cab and head back to the airport. And so during we've done three hours of TV, basically rolling it live to tape in three hours, and we probably had two matches there because it was two different programs, plus a couple of interviews. Then we're back at the Atlanta airport, and we get back on Crockett's plane, we head to Philadelphia. And we land in Philadelphia, and obviously, since it was Philly, Dennis Corluzzo and Frank Chili were at the airport to pick up me and Bobby and Dennis. We go down to the Civic Center. It's an 8 o'clock show. That was the night that we lost the NWA World Tag Team Championship back to the Rock and Roll Express. And that was a two out of three falls match. Part of a big card there, but it was still it was just a house show. It wasn't a big pay-per-view or anything in those days. And we drew an average crowd for Philly at the time, about 7,000 people and around $60,000. Then, that was one of those nights we, we did not stay. I, I, you know, as a matter of fact, I believe, no, we did not stay. We did not stay because I don't have a hotel expense written down. We didn't stay in Philadelphia. We got on Crockett's plane and flew back to Charlotte. So you figure... By the time the show was over in Philly and all the guys got to the airport and got on the plane 
And we'd already had the pilot, Freddie Floyd. Uh, Flair was always, in Philly and Baltimore especially, he'd give the pilots a couple of hundred bucks. They'd get all the beer and get all the food, either at Sabatino's in Baltimore or something in Philly to do with, you know, uh, ribs or pasta or cheesesteaks, whatever the case may be. We leave there about midnight, probably land in Charlotte about 2 o'clock, get back home 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, at least we're home, and hell, we don't have to get up and be back to the airport <laughs> until probably going on to fucking 11 o'clock in the morning. Because we go back to the airport, we get back on Crockett's plane and fly up to Huntington, West Virginia. Whereas there's a 2 p.m. matinee show, that's the Sunday, that's the one that Roger was talking about. And on the card there, our participation, me and the Midnight Express had a six-person cage match with Dusty Rhodes, Magnum TA, and Baby Doll. And that show drew about 5,000 people paying $44,000. Then we got back to the airport. Remember in Huntington, West Virginia, the airport has two gates, gate one and gate two. But we, uh, we go back to the airport... <laughs> And we get back on Crockett's plane and we fly back to Charlotte where we just came from because that night at 8 o'clock, we're at the Charlotte Coliseum. And I mentioned, or Roger mentioned, the afternoon, Robert had a bad back because, uh, Brian, you've seen the video of our, or at least I assume you've seen the video of our tag team title change in Philly, the two out of three fall match. They aired part of it on television. The complete video that my old friend Walt Walansky shot was on the Midnight Express DVD that I put out a few years ago. But right. I remember seeing it. You remember the spot where Bobby came off the top rope with the elbow to Robert Gibson's back? Because when they got heat in one of the falls on Robert, they got heat on his back because Robert actually had a bad back on a number of occasions anyway when he'd take that wild ass backwards over the top rope bump or something sometimes it'd go wrong but they were getting heat on his back in a working way and bobby comes off the top with the elbow drop to the back and it's the only time that i re ever remember anybody complaining about bobby eating doing anything we got back to the locker room and hoot said as soon as he landed that elbow lightning shot out the head of his dick and with the size of Robert Gibson's dick, that had to be a fucking lightning bolt that could have laid waste to a fucking city or, you know, small fucking moon of some kind. <laughs> and he was, what the fuck? And he wasn't right for the rest of the match. And then so by the time he got home or got on the plane and started cooling off and he was icing it, but Dusty said, take the afternoon show off of Huntington because we're sold out tomorrow in Charlotte are going to be. So they gave him, God, 12 hours off for this fucking debilitating back condition where lightning shot out the head of his dick. And he was back in the ring that night at 8 o'clock in Charlotte that Sunday night because it was another rock and roll midnight match that was one of the co-feature main events for the World Tag Team title, this time them defending against us. And it was sold out with almost 12,000 people paying $99,300. And after that event, we just hopped in our fucking cars and drove back home because we were in Charlotte, thank God. So in a 39-hour period from 8 o'clock on Saturday morning until Sunday night at 11 o'clock, we had five matches in four different cities comprising of one TV taping and three house shows, sold 24,000 tickets, and grossed $203,300 in 1986, which in today's money equals $549,570 and change. And that was just a regular weekend. There were no major events here, no Starcade, no Great American Bash. It was just the shows we did all the fucking time. And by the way, and you may have the inflation calculator in front of you, but we made in that two-day period $2,300 a piece, which, going by my math on the the other figure... 6200 
I was going to, I was going to estimate $6,000, 6,200 bucks in two days, in 39 hours. But that was before wrestling got big. And when you hear about that time period and you relay it that way with the schedule, you realize just your life was on the run for years. You can understand why you don't want to do anything like that ever again. Yeah, do you think, can you imagine now, this was not just a big weekend, this was the, the life, month in, month out, year in, year out. Some guys did it longer than we did. We did it for fucking, the midnight was together for seven years, and, you know, then, and I had already been working every night for a year and a half before that in Memphis and went right into Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and then the WWF and traveling hither and yon. So, yeah, but no, we, we were running most of the time. It was always like a panic stress. We got to get there. We got to get there. Wherever we were going, we had to get there. (sighs) We had a long way to go, but a short time to get there. But I'll tell you what, Brian, the most enjoyable thing of all of those days, besides the paycheck, was when you finally got home. You finally got back in your in your nest, in your box, in your cocoon, and you could lay down and get a good night's sleep. That made it all worthwhile. I'll bet. I'll bet you'll bet. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you know what we would have done? We would have slept even better if we had today's modern conveniences and all the luxuries that they have in today's modern world, the miracles of modern science, the space-age technology. There wasn't a Helix mattress back in those days. You know what we had to do, Brian? We had to go out in the backyard, and we had to take the weed whacker, and we had to chop up some grass and some weeds and some dandelions and get a sheet and put it all in the middle of the sheet and then sew a seam down the back. And that's what we slept on. Really? That's what you did? That's what we all slept on back in the 80s. You didn't have these modern mattress factories, and, and we had to use rocks for pillows rocks that we would or asphalt pieces of asphalt that we would dig up out of potholes in the street for pillows because there were no pillow factories (laughs) there were only workhouses and poor houses and places (laughs) to send people when they were broken down and beaten up and at the end of their lives from sleeping on grass clippings with rocks for pillows but folks no more no more none of that happens anymore Because now, the fine folks at HelixSleep.com have not only perfected the mattress business, but they're going to let you in on it. And if you've got one of the old 80s mattresses, throw that thing right. That's why you got the bad hay fever. Because all those dandelions are 40 years old, and they're still stuck in that that shitty sheet. you got to get a brand new mattress so you can have a good night's sleep. And the folks at Helix Sleep, they've got mattresses based on your unique Sleep preferences. They don't sell rocks, though, or asphalt. You've got to sleep on mattresses and pillows. They've got 14 unique mattresses, a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, otherwise fat people, and or tall drinks of water. And even a mattress made just for kids. The goddamn thing, it's cuter than a speckled puppy. It's only three feet long and about a foot and a half wide. You can use it for midgets, too. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. How do you know it's personalized? Because you go to helixsleep.com and you take the quiz. They ask you, how do you like sleep on your back, on your side? Do you run hot? Do you run cold? Do you like firm? Do you like soft? How tall are you? How much do you weigh? You know, how many people are you going to bring into this thing with you? They want to know if you're going to bring in a crowd. Just a few simple facts that they need to go and they will recommend for you. Brian, they've done this for you many times. As you've gone through various relationships, you had that circus fat lady the one time, you got the big and tall mattress. What? And then then you had the, the, the skeleton lady from the sideshow and you had that firm mattress so her bones wouldn't break. And now you got the whole families. You like the kids and dogs to come in. You get one of the the big ones and it's firm because it stands up to a lot of abuse. (laughs) But anyway, you take that quiz and you pick out the mattress. They send it to you 
And well, then you're just sleeping in a in a cloud. You're just you're reclining in a on a warm puppy belly. It's just it's the greatest thing. And they're also American made, so they're not bringing any dandelions or asphalt from Pakistan. It's right here in America. And you get to try it out for a hundred nights risk free. And if you don't love it, they will pick it up for you and give you a full refund and will not even go into any details about what may or may not happen days later when they decide to get even. If you don't want to take my word for it, then Helix has been awarded the number one mattress by GQ and Wired magazines. Seems like people who are wired would never get to sleep, but nevertheless, they love it. And it's recommended by multiple leading chiropodists and doctors of sleep. Chiropractors. Medicine. Chiropractors. Chiropodists. What does a chiropodist do? There's a chiropodist. Is there? I don't know. Yes, there is. They cut the churros. And the, and the doctors of slick, the doctor of sleep medicine, has <laughs> recommended the Helix Sleep Mattress also. Right now, folks. I got to read this. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. And that means you better be listening to us. We save you money. Go to helixsleep.com slash JCE because with Helix Sleep, better sleep starts now. So get on board with this thing. No more asphalt, yard rocks, and grass clippings. Things we used to have to go through in the 80s before they invented all this shit. I think there's been some steps in between, but certainly an upgrade would be Helix Sleep and fine mattresses that we endorse here at Last Manor. We like them very much. Well, now that you've chimed in with your two cents worth, I guess we've sold another 15 or 20,000 of them. I should have my own mattress. <laughs> How would you design it? What is your well, perfect pillow for Jim Cornette? Well, hold on. Well, now you're you're just automatically you're splitting the subject here. Your mattresses and pillows are different, but I should have my own mattress because if George Foreman made all that money on the Foreman grill, what could I do with the corny mattress? Well, first and I'll tell you what it, it would it would be it would be ten feet wide, and it'd be about seven feet long, and that way I got plenty of room to turn over and flop around without run rolling off the edge. You got plenty of room to, for the dogs to come in and you get some puppy bellies rubbed. You got room to bring, bring visitors in if you got company and, you know, relatives or friends have come in for the weekend or whatever. And then the pillows, they can't be like the those bunches of sawdust like that fucking lunatic right-wing pillow former meth addict sells. It's got to be soft and pleasant where your head just kind of is cushioned by it and it envelops the back half of your head without covering up any holes you need to breathe through that's a perfect pillow and a mattress just like helix sleep that's right <laughs>